shooting his dogs here. Um, I put camera on, but I'm not a pretty sight. I just got up. Uh, come on, ah, ah, ah. there you Um, from this article, Kipensis Cornhead's Conspiracy. Above, our Lord Jacob Rothschild, the richest man on earth, the rich, from the richest dynastic family on earth, which has been in control of world's monetary system and all central banks, is a cornhead. Homo Kipensis. According to mainstream scientific research, Homo capensis brains are 30% larger, with an estimated IQ of 180. Right. I can't show you the videos, I'll just leave you a link to the thing, right? Right. Goes on to say, Cornheads were the gods of ancient Egypt and later the blue blood royalty of early European kingdoms. Their main symbols, among others, are the Egyptian obelisk, the pyramid, the Royal African Lions. The obelisk can be found among other places in the Vatican, in the city of London, in Washington, D.C and throughout Switzerland. All secret societies, including Knights Templar, Illuminati and Freemasons over the, the millennia have been continuously run by Cornheads to further their secret agendas. Even the CIA is interested in bloodlines of Illuminati. The technologically advanced antediluvian civilization suffered a serious setback due to the Ice Age Cornheads are the master stone masons who have built the Tower of Babel, giant megalithic structures and pyramids all over the world, designed the European Parliament in France and the Tower of Basel in Switzerland. Present day Cornheads are the 1% elite, the overlords of lords and royalty. They are not like us, not Homo sapiens, they are Homo capensis. They are the parasitic and predatory master race. We pay them taxes and the interest on their private fiat currencies that they own and have exclusive privilege of printing as they please money supply and then loan it to us for profit. All wars are bankers war. Who owns the Federal Reserve? Ancient Rome was also having trouble with bankers, cornheads, Two early U Roman emperors who tried to diminish the power of bankers by reforming usury laws and limiting land ownership to 500 acres. Both emperors were assassinated. In 48 BC, Julius Caesar took back the power to coin money from bankers and minted coins for the benefit of all. With this new and plentiful money supply, Caesar built great public works projects. By making money plentiful, Caesar won the loyalty and admiration of the common man. But bankers hated him. Economic experts believe that this was an important factor in Julius Caesar's assassination. Upon the death of Caesar came the demise of plentiful public money supply in Rome. Taxes increased and so did political corruption. Eventually the corn-headed bankers managed to reduce their money supply by 90%. And as a result, the common people lost their land, blah, 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 goes on. President John F. Kennedy understood the predatory nature of private central banking. He understood why Andrew Jackson fought so hard to end the Second Bank of the United States. So Kennedy wrote and signed Executive Owner 11110, which ordered the US Treasury to issue new public currency, United States notes. Kennedy's United States notes, as opposed to the private Egyptian Federal Reserve notes, were not borrowed at interest from the Federal Reserve, but created by the US government and backed by the silver stockpiles held by the US government. Blah, 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 right? Well, why would a pine cone be so important? Works on everything, isn't it?
Even the top of St Paul's Cathedral has got a massive pine cone on it. Yeah, it's a good article, right? So, I'll leave his link to it, okay? Okay, cheerio, bye.